political hacktivism, that's what many are calling those cyber attacks that were launched by supporters of WikiLeaks, many young people, by the way. They were aimed at companies like Visa, MasterCard, eBay, PayPal, shutting some of those websites down without any notice as to when they were going to be back up. Well, joining us from Pittsburgh now to talk about the state of cybersecurity as a whole and how businesses can protect themselves is Solutionary Chief Security Strategist Don Gray. He's been developing information security technology since 1991, which I got to tell you, way back then, a lot of people didn't even have access to the Internet, Don. So you're Absolutely. certainly early on here. And what's scary, I think, for a lot of us, you know, we hear about various cyber attacks. And, you know, for me, that can mean identity theft. But in this case, hacktivism is something that I think most of the mainstream has not heard of. So talk to us a little bit about these, these cyber attacks and what it means for the business community. Uh, I think, you know, one of the analogies you can draw is to protests that have happened in the past. You know, individuals are um, not happy with decisions that uh, companies, uh, organizations make, and so they want to stage a protest. Hacktivism is really taking that to the next level and leveraging the power of the Internet um, so that anywhere, anywhere on the globe, a teenager in Sweden can decide to uh, make a, 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 a disruption to these websites um, to express their point of view. Now, this is an interesting story. I think this was started by by a 16-year-old kid, right? And I think social networks really helped for him to be able to kind of coordinate this um, distributed denial of service, I think is, the, is what it was called, which basically shut down these websites. Any way for Visa and MasterCard to insulate themselves from this going forward? You know, there, there really isn't any way to prevent it from occurring. I mean, it's really up to the individuals that, to decide what target they want to select. And there is really no way to prevent it. The, what you can do, though, is prepare for um, the possibility of it occurring and making sure that you have sufficient business continuity planning in, in place, um, sufficient capacity, um, and, and perhaps some elastic capacity. We're seeing people move towards cloud solutions to be able to provide that elastic capacity so that if somebody is trying to bombard a website, for instance, with, with traffic, they can handle that and, and, and have the disruption be minimalized. And I know we're, we're going to talk about cloud computing more in just a moment, but I also want to turn to, you know, hacktivism is a, a certain type of cyber attack, but just last week, former Goldman Sachs computer programmer Sergey Alenikov, I apologize if I'm not pronouncing this correctly, well, he was found guilty of stealing trade secrets by taking part of a high-frequency computer source code. That's a very different type of situation. Is this one that companies can protect themselves against? Well, there's, there's definitely a bunch of steps that, that, that we can, you know, we work with companies at Solutionary to go through to help help identify what are their critical assets, what what is the information they need to protect. If you, if you don't know exactly what you need to protect and where it is within your organization, then you, you can't protect it. You also have to know who has access to it and what kind of access do they have. A lot of times we see organizations treat access as kind of a, a binary condition where they either have access or don't. And we try to educate organizations about the nuances of making sure you're limiting bulk access to information and that you're putting protections in place to actually enforce um, the access restrictions that you want to have occur. Do you think, Don, that companies are spending enough money on this or do you expect looking forward to see the budgets that they allocate to cybersecurity expanding? You know, um, Typical industry figures around 5% of IT spending on, on actual information security, and there's a big range there amongst industries and regions. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously in the last couple of years, we've seen IT budgets be fairly flat. We've seen IT security budgets be fairly flat. I do think we are going to see an increase for organizations that feel they have those critical assets to protect. They, they do have to step up the, the spending to protect them. Now, which companies or industries do you think are most at risk in terms of breach and security? cybersecurity. I mean, the hacktivism, it sounds like stay down, stay, try and stay off the radar if you can. But, you know, yeah. the financial companies obviously are obvious targets here. Sure. Any company that has protected information, so financial companies, healthcare organizations, retail organizations, those are the ones we typically see do a better job of information security at this point in time, just because they have been required to by regulations and, 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 and industry uh, industry. Uh, pushes. All right. You know what, Don, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. I'm sure we're going to be checking in with you again. This is Don Gray coming to us. He's the chief security strategist for Solutionary. All right.